made up to four hundred thousand dollars in in Washington. Uh, what did you actually make, and where did Portman come up with that number? And so far, was he adding up all your fringes and four hundred one k, et cetera, et cetera? He said, "I went to Washington, went to work for a lobby firm. I did not lobby." And I just, I release my income tax returns. Look at my income tax returns. You'll see exactly what I mean. Okay, are those on your website? We can provide them to you. Happy to yeah. I mean, as I recall, you around a quarter million. Did he come up with that by adding additional fringes or I anything? I don't know how he came up with that. I just think he made it up as he made up some other things. Um, tonight he started saying I left a $8 billion deficit. In weeks past, they've been saying I left a $6 billion deficit. So I just think he made up some stuff tonight because I don't think he had answers to the questions that were uh, uh, acceptable to most people. And so he just went off the reservation and started saying things that were not true. Were you surprised about his response to the immigration reform question? Well, the fact is, uh, uh, he apparently has changed his mind, but Senator Portman, you know, I've, I've said he has the backbone of a jellyfish, and I don't want to insult the jellyfish. Um, uh, you know, at a point in time, he voted against uh, a bipartisan bill, and now I think he, uh, he understands that it's a little more politically acceptable to be for immigration reform, and so he said he is for immigration reform. Uh, and I think that's just, you know, an example of how, I mean, you know, I, you know, I've said for the last year and a half during this campaign, I, and I think Rob Portman's a good human being, but uh, I just, uh, you know, I just don't think he has an ounce of courage, um, uh, you know, as illustrated in his late withdrawal from Donald Trump uh, after, uh, you know, uh, failing to do that for several months, um, and, uh, you know, his, his uh, change in position with the TPP, voting to fast track it last year, and then, you know, I get into this race, he knows trade's going to be an issue, so he, he's a flip-flopper, uh, and, uh, and I think he's, I, I, you know, I think he's a weak leader. Uh, um, taking credit for 14 major things, I mean, he sent out a press release before that omnibus bill passed last year, taking credit for 14 things in that omnibus bill. And as I said, $300 million for Lake Erie, money for NASA Glenn, money for the Pike Tech, money for the you know, drug treatment. And, you know, and then he voted no, and yet he's continued to go around Ohio the last several months taking credit for what he actually voted against. He didn't have the courage to actually cast the vote himself, so he let others carry the water for him, and then he takes credit for it. That's really weak leadership. And quite frankly, it's not unlike some of his Senate colleagues have described him to me uh, as I've talked with them about their experience with him. He, he, he just does not exhibit courage. He, he puts his finger to the wind and whatever seems to be uh, you know, politically advantageous to him, he tends to do. What are you hoping you get to talk about in the final debate that you haven't talked about, or what do you want to revisit? Um, well, I think the, you know, I think what we talked about tonight was, you know, sort of a broad-based uh, treatment of, of a variety of issues, all the way from, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind talking about tax policy. Um, we haven't talked a lot about that in the first two debates, but uh, you know he, he 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 has voted to cut taxes for really rich people and shift taxes onto the backs of working people when he voted for that Ryan budget, um, and so uh, the basic difference between Rob Porton and, my, and myself, as I see it, is that I, I I've never forgotten where I came from. And he's never forgotten where he came from. And I've spent my political life trying to advocate for regular working people. And he has spent his political life looking out for those who are already privileged, people like him. And on, on nearly any issue, 
whether it's whether it's you know Dodd Frank or whether it's I mean one issue after another, tax policy. He's always on the side of of, of the rich and the powerful, um, and I've always tried to be on the side of regular working people. What's Governor, next? Oh, go ahead, uh, Governor. There were no questions tonight about foreign policy. What is your position on Syria? What would you do about? Well, that's a rather America? broad, sure. gen generalized question. Syria, first of all, Syria is very complex, and I think a lot of people don't understand all of the complexity that exists around that uh, very serious problem. And I'm not going to stand here and imply to you that there is a simple, uh, um, single correct answer. Syria is uh, right now. Uh, seeing a bloodbath from so many different factions. Uh, and the Russian involvement further complicates it, obviously. Um, but um, uh, I think we're doing uh, what we can do at this point in Syria. I support uh, uh, the, the, you know, the airstrikes. I would even support enhanced airstrikes if that was um, thought by our military people to be needed. The drone strikes I support, although I understand that there are complications associated with that. I support the President's decision to put uh, a limited number of special forces in there, primarily in an advisory capacity, but also understanding that they face danger if they're in that, in that situation. Uh, I think um, uh, we ought to consider um, a no-fly zone. Uh, Secretary Clinton has uh, suggested that that may be helpful. I think we ought to do everything we possibly can do to help provide humanitarian um, relief. And I think we've got to ex expect the other players in the region, and I would single out Saudi Arabia especially, to become more responsible uh, and more helpful. Um, I think Saudi Arabia is the seedbed of much of the radicalization that we're seeing in that part of the world uh, through their money, through their schools. Uh, and I think Saudi Arabia tries to have it both ways. On the one hand, they want to be our friend. They want to uh, cooperate in our fight against ISIS. But on the other hand, they are encouraging a lot of the violence that's occurring in that part of the world. And, and I think we really need to take a very sober look at our relationship with Saudi Arabia. And just let me say this, that I believe what we're dealing with in Syria today is a direct result of our decision to invade Iraq. And as I've said many times, the most important vote I've ever cast in my political life was the vote against the Iraq war. I think we went into Iraq, we destabilized that region, and we are we're trying to deal with the consequences but it is very, it's very complex. Um, the, one, the one thing that I will say to you very definitely, I will not support the introduction of ground forces into that part of the world again. We've had going on 15 years of continuous war. Um, the American people, I think, uh, would never tolerate that. I certainly would never support it as a senator. Oh, I just want to, once, once you have this one last debate, what, what's yes. your strategy for the last three weeks? What's your... To hit Ohio, to, 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 to go wherever I can go, to see as many people as I can see, uh, and, uh, and, and to encourage people to actually get out and vote and to support me. And, um, and that will be a very fast and furious uh, couple of weeks.